Hello everyone, this is Bentley from Kent, Washington, and I wanted to do a couple of updates, which most importantly, we'll start with our quarantine tank. Uh, so here you can see, the first thing you're going to notice is those Jim and Blue Rams. Uh, there's a bunch of rainbows and a couple of quarries that are in here. Uh, this is shot a little over a week ago. There's actually uh, something else in my quarantine too that I'll, I'll show a little later. They were a birthday present from my, my lovely mother. She got me a pair of L333 Yellow King Tiger Plecos, um, which those things are super cool. And as soon as I can get them not to just be constantly hiding under a piece of wood, <laughs> I will, I'll be showing those to you guys. But uh, this, you can see like my usual horde of rainbows that have been in my quarantine. Um, we have a couple of really cool species in here that all came from some notable readers. The Bosmani in here, there are six of them in total. Uh, I think it's three and three, if I remember right, three males, three girls. Those are a Tinjo Bosmani, so the red Bosmani, from uh, Rosario Lacorte's breeding line. Now I got them from somebody who got his initial pair from Rosario, um, who, if you don't know who Rosario Lacorte is, he's a really old school, very old style breeder. I mean, he's been in the hobby for ages. Very, very knowledgeable. His fish are really, really wonderful. Uh, and then also in there, we have some turquoise, um, some the Glossolepis pseudoensis, which is the Millennium Red Rainbow. They're a little different than the Erian Rainbow, the more common red that you see. Very cool fish. Uh, there's some Dwarf Neon Rainbows, and then some Wapoga Red Laser Rainbows, the Melanotania Rubravita. And then also um, the, the other kind of cool one in there is the Melanotania maculakai, and I might have that pronounced wrong, from Harvey Creek, which we'll have a zoom in on those shortly. Uh, but I also wanted to feature these those German blue rams you see, which have gorgeous, gorgeous color. I've got two boys and a girl. Um, those come from local breeder Dean. So if you've watched aquarium co ops videos, you've, you've ever seen like Master Breeder Dean or something like that, that's the guy. He's a really good German blue ram breeder, gorgeous color. Here's the Maculakai's a little closer. You can see like those black stripes coming up the body and just the hint of the orangish red tone in the fins. These, and keep in mind, these are really little guys. They're only like three quarters of an inch. And there's those German blue rams. Ah, oh, they're just gorgeous. Look at, look at the orange. <laughs> and, and my camera does not do them justice. Their blue is so much better than it looks right there in person. Uh, and then finally, there's a pair of quarries that I got at an auction. Uh, those are the duplicate quarry or the duplicarius. They look a lot like the Adolfoy, little orange bit on the shoulder. There's one of the beautiful praycocks. <laughs> um, but the, the bigger thing that I want to show off, let's kick over to the, of these guys. Now you might be asking, what the heck are those? <laughs> and it's a good question because these are not very common in the hobby anymore. These are the Kochu Tetra also known as the Blue King Tetra or the Cobalt Tetra. Um, their actual scientific name is Bolkea Fredkochuri, and I'm pretty sure I'm butchering the way that's supposed to be pronounced, but I'll, I'll put it up on the screen. Um, these guys are really cool. So they, they get to between one and a half and two inches, um, so they're not very big. They're a lot like a, a Neon or Cardinal Tetra, but you'll notice... In the tail, they have this lovely little kind of powdery blue color. And then the males, eventually, when they get to full size, because these guys aren't fully grown, they'll get a blue-green iridescence up their whole body. Uh, and then the females, their their silver also kind of has some kind of pink tones to them. Uh, and then they all keep that nice blue color in the tail. They're a really strong schooler. I guess shoulder should be more appropriate. They, this is not really true schooling action where they stay in a tight knit group and follow at all times, but they will. Uh, they're a strong shoaling fish. They really need to be in groups at least eight. And realistically, I would say for these particular fish, 20 is really what you want to shoot for. And I, and I know I just said, like, you probably haven't seen them before. It's because they're very hard to get in the hobby. Um, a shout outs to Aquarium Co op and, and Corey specifically. He spent six months finding these fish for me so if if you if you happen to be in the seattle area and you've never been to aquarium co-op i can't i don't know how many times i've like gushed about them but like they're they're absolutely wonderful about their customer service and every time i saw Corey, he was like hey i'm still looking for those fish for you i'm still looking for those fish for you he finally found them and uh you might have seen him in one of their unboxings i think they called him the cobalt tetra in that in particular but uh <laughs> They never, they never left quarantine. I, I just bought them all. And there's about, I would say, 75 to 80 in here. Um, 
in this uh, 60 gallon setup. The only thing that you need to worry about with these guys, uh, other than what few of them are in the hobby are most likely wild caught. There are some that are tanked rays. Um, they're just really hard to get a hold of. And usually they have to be imported. When they're stressed or in smaller groups, they can be a little nippy on the fins. So uh, this particular tank, about a day after I shot this, I moved some of my juvenile rainbows into this tank in order to give them a little more room to swim around and grow out uh, because they were just, they were growing at really good, really good rate. And I wanted to give them more room. Well, for the first day, they were getting a little bit of nip from the, the Kochu Tetras, had a little bit of fin nipping. But after that day, the stress went away from the Kochu Tetras. They realized the rainbows aren't going to hurt them. They're not a predator. They're all going to get along together just fine. They left them alone from there on out. So if you do happen to get Kochu Tetras, be aware that they can be a little nippy on the fins. So I wouldn't put them with anything like guppies. Uh, I wouldn't put them with bettas. Anything that's real long finned and kind of slower, not necessarily a fast fish. I would avoid those with these guys. But any other tetra... Um, things like dwarf neon rainbows where they don't have long fins but they are a little bigger and they're very peaceful would all be pretty good with these guys or they're honestly just great as a single species tank uh you'll notice they swim pretty top water so i'm pretty sure you could keep some plecos with this with these guys they come from the amazon basin originally um so you know they're they're an amazon schooling fish just like your cardinal or your neon the difference being um a little harder to find my opinion, a little cooler because the blue is a little different and you don't have uh, that big band of red. So they're they're kind of an interesting eye popper where most people who are into fish are going to ask you what these things are and where you can get them <laughs> because they're very hard to find. But when you can find them, man, they're sweet. Um, and as you can see, just swimming around, like just look at that little blue, the way it flickers back and forth, the way the iridescence comes off the light. Really, really neat fish. Um, so... This was a kind of like birthday slash Christmas present to myself. <laughs> um, and uh, I, I've been so satisfied with these fish. Like waiting six months was totally worth it when they finally came in. I got to go see them in person uh, when they were in quarantine. And it was just like, I, at first I, would, I was only thinking I was going to get 30 of them. And then I was like, yeah, I'll just, just how many? I take my money. I want them all. <laughs> like... Um, so you'll see more of these guys in the future as they grow up, just because I want to show their full color where you see like that whole body iridescence come in and, uh, don't get too attached to this tank. <laughs> they won't be in this thing for long. It was kind of a quarantine system. It was going to be a permanent home. It, it blew a seal on me this morning, like a few hours ago. So, uh, they've been moved to something different and they'll have a different permanent home long-term, but I just wanted to show this and do a minor species spotlight on the Kochu Tetra. Hope you all have a great weekend.